to my solo queue teammates in my last game, to the support telling me to stop playing like iron, to the guys and girls who were so insistent on feeding a cat you'd think this was an animal shelter only to then start whining like babies in desperate need of a tit, while the results of your actions meant there was no distance too great for me to be spin spun one shot shank my stank back to base as my support's efforts of preventing it were suboptimal. To the ones spending their time sitting in base trying to find out who was voting no while I was dealing with the consequences of your actions. How's it feel? Knowing that I was the one voting no. Because I knew this game could be won, as you continued to flame me saying I was trolling, wasting your time for not giving up, threatening to immigrate your entire family to EU thinking others will give up more over there. How's it feel? Knowing that we were slowly catching up in this quote unquote unwinnable waste of time game, knowing that this busty pop star was starting to deliver the double D's DPS in every battle, turning the tides of every team fight. Knowing that we were starting to look like groups of divorced parents trying to buy their kids love and the enemy base had PS5s in stock. How's it feel? To be those guys still threatening to leave the game, still issuing virginity votes every three minutes, knowing that every team fight I was getting closer to carrying your undeserved toxic tanks to victory. Until we got that big final ace with four of us up, knowing that all we had to do was victory lap our way into their base and rub our sweaty gooches all over their dead nexus. But then it happened. In what I thought would be the one for one trade to win us the game, this flaming twitter simp missed not one, but two forms of CC, and the other four losers I was tethered to failed to do one thing correctly. I'll tell you how it feels. Absolutely f***ing awful to actually care about climbing in this game. Anyways, outside of my emotional rollercoaster of a seemingly daily routine and ranked solo queue you may have noticed that I almost carried that without an ADC mythic, and if you've been on Twitter lately, you would see others talking about how the best ADC builds right now don't even consist of ADC items, so today I am going to show you how going crown on AD carries will turn big bursts, into cute little gooch tickles. And then I will illustrate how full AP builds on these marks people are becoming the Ned's declassified survival guide against tanks in the current meta. So please wipe those tears from my intro away sit back relax give the like and subscribe buttons a small domestic violence amount of slapping and let's get into the games. Alright we in this beach I've been starting tier with this build cuz Monogana make me a bursty boy plus these uncoordinated pre-game introductions always act as a way for me to get some free stacks hashtag worth and then it's time for me to start showing why this hurricane hoe bag became the biggest antagonist to my ass kicking in this video. You see she was all floaty in my face all game which was making me more pissed than a urinating dick but luckily when things got heated that groovy grandfather clock was like sit yo ass down hose as he takes down Legolas's wife which allows me to look the cloud queefer in the eyes and say go float around in fountain you blowing bellend. Then I am just casually watching this toxic turret take my farm with less lane pressure than a clown tricycle on a highway when our jungler cordially invites a group of us to the first annual river rumble to which I'm like is that bitch Jana gonna be there? And he's like yup so you already know what I was doing before hitting a douche dash fizzled tickler for the double rip the small crab that became an innocent casualty of war and say hello to our mid lane Chippendale Charlie who made the trip just to punch that floating statue of liberty in the throat. This allowed me to finish my first boring AD item and to start getting into the interesting stuff as the dumb asshole thinks their early game zoning festival is gonna continue to which I'm like girl who has two thumbs one giant index finger made of foam and just took your ult straight to his face, this guy now die bitch and then it's worth noting that Tornado Teresa made like a fat tit and bounced. But here is where the plot thickens the protagonist goes through his rough patch and the character development of the bad guy takes place as me and this fat resurrecting clock juggle tower aggro like a drunk seal would juggle bowling balls so needless to say my blonde gooch hairs are back on the black and white bench forced to live with the reality that I just got outplayed by someone who just did this. Turns out a minute later my set is hosting an all you can kick ass buffet over at chickens which means this lovely lady is about to die in my arms muahaha until I eat another 800 pound arrow miss half my abilities get tangled in a tornado fail flash and watch my full health zillion give himself the ult that I was under the impression would be mine. <laughs> And he clearly had remorse over delivering that bundle of immortality to the wrong address but I'm over here like a cocky swaddled Chad Michael Murray saying yay no more threat of FF which means more sweat and AP aka time to show the world what happens when Rav goes full try hard mode under the pressure.
and in case it's not abundantly clear I was not a fan of this flailing gale girl getting up and in my grill all the time. I was feeling a bit poisonous but I never hit send cause I'm wholesome as shit now instead I thought of my girl Beyonce's famous words if you like it then you should put a ring on it but I don't like this Janna I hate her so I killed her with said ring and then after missing a cue I was like yo zil dog make this bitch sit still so I can shove this foam finger straight up her asshole. Then clearly the giant floating clock glued to this shitter's back was wrong because he didn't realize it was time for a tornado and a Godzilla arrow to be delivered to this zip code so he gets ready backstage for his own funeral leaving me alone to do the dirty work of finally getting a solo bolo on this stupid ass levitating weather woman burning everything including my heel hashtag I have permanent phantom nimbus cloak syndrome only for my kill to get nabbed by that corpse as a coat wearing ruined steel simp of 200 years. This prompts our team's magic mic to try and give me macro gameplay guidance but I'm a lead player so I must let him know I won't be backseated even though I was headed mid anyways because you already know. Then we are mid telling the enemy team to play whack-a-mole with the river shrubs and alternate popping their heads out one at a time so that we can wham bam slaughter the Janna jam, which slightly drained the blue balls bin but still wasn't the solo bolo I was after. Anyways we get a call that a wild wind shitter escaped his cage and is now trying to fight four people by himself like they all do so I remain patient knowing they all eventually wear themselves out and then I fizzle tickled for the tap into shift shitter away to share a bit of that stun with Mr. Resurrecting Viego. That said I get a notification that Akali has joined the call and as an ADC who has been on many calls with an Akali I know my best bet is to put myself on mute and pretend my ass isn't here until someone else kicks that dashing douche out you feel me? Well hey there, what are you offering? For only $2.95 a minute, I will leave you breathless. That is exactly what I've needed. Akali has joined the call. Oh shit. Your window to run away is closing. Oh and you can just see Zillion deep in thought thinking about if he maybe ulted the wrong target there. Solo bolo time boys. But as I was escaping, the producers at the RAV review were like hey RAV we're doing a before and after crown of the shattered queef shot and so we need a quick before shot when it's passive is down. Perfect and now smile and look happier in the after shot. Anyways with the Niagara Falls ult on cooldown we figured we could circle jerk the giant river worm and peace only for Hasaki to say no you don't so I use my get out of death free card to make like this yass holes parents and split as I go zero for Saturday in the skill shot department only succeeding in stoking the big worms tantrum so he doesn't tire out before reuniting with the fight just in time to steal the last kill and that my folks is the essence of ADC in my games. Oh and I lost a sub that day. At this point I have both Crown and Zonias which means the next time I join a fight at the last second have Rift Alexa announce my name like I was there all along and then get Karth assaulted I have all the tools I need to give that dead levitating reaper a set of dark swollen blue balls. But then it was finally time. That's right you could call this game a hallmark movie because it had a happy yet underwhelmingly anticlimactic ending where I finally fucked that flailing wind slut and we finished out the game as my KDA and my damage ween were both worth putting on the sexy whitey tidies and taking some ass pics in the mirror for TikTok but my job wasn't done. It was now time to show the tank killing potential, a full AP Varus. This game started off a bit slow until 10 minutes in when Thresh showed mid meaning Jin was about to be a third wheel so I used my BSDM bow to tie him up and despite him asking if he could be a fourth wheel instead me and my luminescent unicorn both decided that we would rather just have the lane to ourselves instead. Now there's a lot of speculation about if unicorns are real but I can assure they are and this poor one must have been stuffed with metal because she was a Thresh hook magnet.
but I knew it'd turn out because this was the same godly support from my first Strike Ezreal video so the next time that supporting cast in the Little Mermaid Thresh Metal noose that Healy Ho we might as well have brought the tissue box down because those losers got masturbated and then when it was time for me to step up and body block like the man in this relationship, I said you're on your own girl and fled south. And while things were looking up we still couldn't get all the metal out of her asshole but call her David Blaine or some shit because no other human is surviving that and then Thresh is like hey Jin why get killed by one enemy when you can take this lantern and get killed by four, to which Jin is like, FOUR! So yeah that worked out in my team's favor. At this point I had Ludies and one of Baron's baby teeth in my sack meaning I was time to burst only to remember that Netflix's arcane just came out so Victor could now kill me three times over with one combo but luckily I had a heel queefing sex goat miraculously keeping me alive long enough to brainstorm our next steps and then it hit me. The only way to kill an arcane character, is with another arcane character get out played riot you sly skin selling bastards bet you didn't think about that, then I was like Jin knock knock it's fitness. And he's like fitness who and I was like fit in this whole dick in your mouth omega lull and then it's worth noting that when the fish tank in finding Nemo Thresh escaped one bard's fart from death, it turns out he chose to call his uber back to base in a dangerous part of town so I showed him how to get there a bit faster. And a minute later when I saw J3's son up to no good I definitely intentionally missed my ult knowing it would hit lantern Larry so that we could cast our move entitled Netflix Arcane on him. Starvin Jarvin was over here literally moving mountains to escape but he forgot one small detail and that's these AP arrows are chunkers. This gave me enough gold to buy Dan, the rabbi's death cap so once this polar express piece of shit was done going Jake Paul on my ass I showed him the power of this build. Okay I probably should have mentioned that you need to pop stacks to do damage. So yes he wasn't exactly thrilled about the idea of ADCs building AP items and as I continued to act less like a marksman more like a mage all the tanks were getting real quiet at this point until I was even able to kill an arcane character. But this Jarvan must have been a few fries short of a happy meal up in the northern head hemisphere because he seemed to forget every time that AP Varus is like a Tootsie Pop and it only takes 3 stacks to get to the center of a dead tanky bitch so he got bursted. Then I gave him an encore of said burst. And then we blew up their base. The end. Rav out. Bang. I pull up in this mother f riff. Dang. Chats full of twerps typing imagine if. Why? Every skill shot I take is another whiff. But when we lose I just point and say it's jungle diff.